Okay, well, uh, here is the uh, here is the uh, unboxed new Dyson Supersonic blow dryer that I bought that I didn't need, and I figured I would continue to um, bathe in my shame um, of my drunk purchasing habits with you and uh, walk you through a quick unboxing of this item. Uh, so that you too can know what you could get for uh, just under $500. Uh, this unit cost me $427.99 or something like that. It included free shipping, but they made me pay tax, which I really don't know why, because last I heard, Dyson was a British company. Anyway, um, the first thing to notice is that this box here that it came in is a majorly substantial box. Now... I've had light bulbs shipped to me in boxes, less sturdy than this. I mean, this is a substantial box. And uh, all I can say is that I'm pretty darn sure that they care a lot about the user experience because when you opened it up, uh, it, was, uh, it was almost godlike uh, in its presentation. So uh, don't mean any blasphemy to, to those of you out there. But uh, anyway, it was quite a godlike presentation. So the next thing is they give you a, a pretty good uh, instruction booklet here. And I, I never really thought I'd need an instruction booklet for a blow dryer, but um, I am keeping this. Uh, there's a very good possibility I'm keeping it largely because um, a $430 blow dryer is probably a likely candidate for a resale. And if you have all the items, you can, you can resell it a lot easier. Okay, so it came with uh, some doodads. This is a diffuser uh, that I ne will never ever use. Um, and in fact, I'm not even sure I'm actually gonna use this blow dryer, given that I usually just put gel on my hair and let it dry naturally. Um, again, um, I don't know why I bought this thing. Then it's got uh, two, different, uh, two different nozzles. Uh, this one here uh, is um, for a higher, a higher level of direct, high level of direct flow. And this one is a, uh, uh, for an even more concentrated level of flow. Um, and then you've got uh, this nifty pad over here, uh, which uh, I think you're supposed to use like this in case you have a slip surface, slippery surface in your, um, uh, in your bathroom. And uh, they give you this little thing over here, which you can use to roll up said mat and uh, store it away uh, in an effective and pro properly British manner. All right, the other thing that's, uh, that's pretty unique about this thing is the size of the plug. It's pretty substantial. It's got the ground fault indicator on it that's required of all blow dryers, so uh, we can't throw this thing in the, in the bathtub if you want to end it all. Uh, and then on the unit itself, it's got some controls. Um, uh, first, this is the, the on and off switch, which I'm not going to turn on because it would make it some kind of a noise. And by the way, I will do another video that talks about the noise. Um, this one here is a cold switch, so that if you want to go from whatever heat setting you have to a um, less hot setting very quickly with it just being air, you can press that. This is a, uh, a, a temperature thing. I think you press it one, two, three, four for each different um, level of, of heat. And this nifty little button here is the reverse ionizer, uh, which I believe uh, transports you to the closest beauty salon, like the transporter in Star Trek, in case you really mess up your hair. Oh, that's right, I, I read the instructions wrong. Uh, it is to reduce the ions so that you get less static, um, less static uh, interruption into your blow drying and less static feel to your hair. So um, the other thing that's kind of cool is that it's it, it feels pretty pretty weighty in your hand. It doesn't feel like a cheap piece of crap. Um, the other thing that's really neat is uh, I don't know if I can do this with one hand or not. Is you turn this. And if you, you turn that, you should be able to remove the housing. I can't do it with one hand. You just move that little red thing to the left, and then the um, uh, and then the 
the housing comes off and you can clean the filter, which I think is a pretty damn good idea. When I, you know, I'm not sure if I'll ever use this thing, but if I did use it, I wouldn't want to regularly change the filter because all of you know who, who have blow dryers, they get a bunch of stuff in there and then you have to take them completely apart. And usually they're not user serviceable and you end up having to throw it away. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'll just take this and move it down like that. And then you can just, uh, you know, un remove the clogs and clean the damn thing up and, and whatnot. The other thing uh, that I kind of like about this, uh, if, it, as if it matters, is the, these attachments attached uh, using magnets, which I think is kind of nifty. You just put it in there and it pops right in, holds in there real nice, and they're easily changeable. Just give it a little bit of anti-magnetic force with your hand, and it snaps right in there. See? And then, uh, again, the uh, other device that I will not use. Pretty cool, huh? It's pretty 21st century if I've ever seen it. So anyway, that's the, uh, the initial view. Uh, I'm probably the least qualified person in the world to give a overview of a blow dryer because I basically don't use them. And yes, I bought this when I was drunk. And um, I do have a fetish for Dyson um, uh, stuff because I... I believe in their mission and I believe in cool engineering, uh, but there's a good chance I'm going to end up giving this to someone that I care about uh, or continuing to use it as a self-mocking device. So um, after I uh, get to use it, I will give you uh, another video and I will show you the results of my hair and you all can decide whether or not this thing was, uh, was worth the $430. And uh, based on your comments, I'll decide whether I'm going to sell it off, throw it off a cliff, um, or uh, or keep it around. Thanks.